What's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today we're gonna to be looking at the Strike Movement Haze Trainer. So I have had multiple asks to review this model from viewers in the community, and I am so freaking stoked that I listened to y'all and did because this model has been one of the few shoes in my review career where I've been like, wow, like this is a shoe that I would wear all of the time. So let's dive into a few pros that come along with this model is number one, it walks a really good line between being stable and versatile. So generally with cross training shoes, when stability goes up, versatility goes down. But this shoe does a really good job at walking that middle ground in between to where you can literally deadlift 500 pounds in the shoe or wear them on a shorter run or for hit training and they don't feel super uncomfortable. So I am really stoked on how this model has performed in literally all the performance testing I have done thus far in it. The second pro is just the overall last construction, how this shoe fits. So this has a more anatomical last to it. So it actually like mimics how the foot is built. And up here in the toe box, we have a little bit of a curve and it's a little bit wider in the forefoot than other cross training shoes. So I really like that for promoting toe splay and just overall natural movement. The third pro of this model is its midsole and outsole construction. So this model features Strike Movement's medium density Kush 50 midsole. And overall, I think this material does a really good job at once again, providing you with enough reactivity and responsiveness for hit, sprints, more agility work, etc., and being stable enough to support even your heaviest training sessions. The outsole features Strike Movement's cross-platform two construction. Basically, this outsole has a beefed up toe guard for durability, it's fully rubber, and its texture here provides traction in pretty much any direction you're moving, whether it's lateral, forward, and backwards. The fourth pro of this model is just the overall upper construction and how this shoe fits. The upper is breathable and it breaks in really fast. And overall, like I mentioned that I love the midsole and outsole construction, this shoe maneuvers really well. So like, truthfully, like, I love training in barefoot shoes and I think there's a lot of merit in how they increase your proprioceptive feeling with the ground. If I had to say which cross training shoe felt most similar-ish to a barefoot shoe, I would honestly say this because it is fairly minimal in construction with its stack height and the outsole maneuvers so well that you can really get a lot of movement out of this shoe compared to other cross training shoes on the market that are a bit more stiff in nature due to like very thick rubber components. Now. Overall, I've really been enjoying the shoe once again, but now let's talk about a couple of cons that I could see folks having with this model. All right, so two potential cons I could see folks having with this model is number one, it does have a slightly higher price point. At a price of $150 USD, this is a bit more expensive than other top cross training shoes on the market. Now, I do think that price could be justified, especially if you are taking good care of them and you plan to wear them for a majority of your training. Truthfully, like this shoe should last you a while as long as you're obviously not like, dipping them in water, putting them in the washer and dryer, et cetera. So overall, I think the price could be justified, especially if you plan to wear them a lot. The second potential con I could see folks having with this model is that it is a pretty low profile shoe and it does have a removable insole. However, if you have custom orthotics and they're a bit thicker in nature, then I actually feel like the shoe will be a bit tight on you, especially through the forefoot and midfoot. So if you do have thicker custom orthotics, the shoe may feel a little bit snug for you. However, I don't know if that's gonna be a make or break because Truthfully, it's gonna to be tough, especially when it comes to like your individual foot anatomy. If you have a higher arch, for example, then it could feel really uncomfortable. But if you have like a more low profile foot, then you may be fine actually with your orthotics in this. Just definitely food for thought with the overall shoe and how low profile it is, especially throughout the midfoot and forefoot. But now let's talk about the best part of this review, which I like the most, which is the performance section. Let's talk about how this model performs across the board. So now when chatting performance in this model, I'm gonna break this section into a few different parts. We'll talk about lifting, more versatile training, and then shorter runs and daily wear. Now, when it comes to lifting, Overall, I think the stability in this model is gonna be plenty fine for a majority of lifters. Training well over 400 pounds in this model, I never had issues with stability. And even in cleans where you are getting up on the toes and catching weight, this model's responsiveness doesn't detract from its ability to stabilize the foot. Plus, with the overall wider toe box and anatomical last, the shoe just feels really comfortable and natural when lifting in them. So if you're doing unilateral work, like lunges, etc., you can really maneuver well in this shoe to feel the ground below you and then produce force 
reverse or bias weight in certain parts of your foot as you wish. So overall, I think this model does a better job in a lifting standpoint than other cross trainers that are super stable in nature because it actually allows you to feel the ground a bit more. And that's again due to the overall midsole and outsole construction and how this model does have a slightly lower stack height. The heel to toe drop in this model is four millimeters. So if you do like having a slightly flatter foot position as well, this is also a good model for tackling that. So when it comes to versatile training, overall, this shoe has been awesome. So if you're doing classes, hit, you're doing sprint work, you're doing jumps, etc. I think this model is going to be a really good pick for you. With the beefed up toe guard here, we get a little bit of durability for toe dragging. And with the fully rubber outsole and how the tread is, you get a lot of traction in pretty much any direction you're moving. Factor in the midsole and outsole and how maneuverable those are and how responsive slash stable they are for both accommodating takeoff and landing phases in your jumps or your more bounding style activities. Plus, with the overall like low profile design of the shoe, I almost want to say it feels like more minimalist and sock-like in nature because it moves so well with you that if you're jumping or like driving through the toes, for example, this model really locks you in and there's never really any toe slide at all and you never really have any issues with just feeling like the shoe is loose or potentially gonna come off of you. So for shorter runs and daily wear, I actually really like this model for shorter runs. The overall outsole and construction of this model is designed to promote a more midfoot to forefoot strike. So if you do run with a midfoot and forefoot strike like myself, this model feels pretty comfortable. Plus, once again, with that maneuverable outsole, you get a lot of feedback in this model and it breaks in pretty dang fast. So if you plan to run like faster paced runs that are under three miles, this model should be a decent bet for you compared to other cross trainers that deliver the same level of stability. On a day-to-day -day basis, this model is also comfortable I actually might stop wearing them so much on a daily basis because I want them to go the distance and last longer. But I have been rocking these a lot, especially to grab coffees and walk the dogs. And overall, this has been a really comfortable shoe. Plus, with its overall simplistic aesthetic here, it doesn't look like an overly gym-focused shoe. Like, you can wear these with pants and they don't look that terrible. And they look pretty dang casual at that. So now let's answer the question, is this model worth it? Personally, I think it is. So it does have a slightly higher price point. But truthfully, like, if you're going to be wearing these for a majority of your training and you like the more simplistic look of them, then I think you'll really like this model because you can wear it to the gym on a day-to-day -day basis and it will tackle most of your training really well. So overall, I do think this model is worth it. I have linked my written review below if you want more details on this shoe. All right, so now let's talk on weight drop and overall insole construction in this model. So for the weight in a size 10 model, you can expect 11.4 ounces. This model features a four millimeter heel to toe drop and this shoe does have a removable insole. So if that is a make or break for you, you will get a removable insole in this model. Test, test, one, two. So when it comes to sizing and fit in this model, you should be safe going true to size and that's what Strike Movement recommends on their site. This model does feel a bit more snug just due to the low profile design. I have adequate room up here in the toe box when it comes to length and width. So I think for most folks, you should be safe. It will feel, I think, a bit more snug through the midfoot because of its design, but that's honestly kind of a better thing in the context of the shoe because as long as you have room in the toe box and you're not having obviously heel slip, the shoe fits more like a sock once again, it feels very much more minimalist in nature. And overall, I think that actually feeds really well into this model's performance. So when it comes to price, once again, you can expect to pay $150 USD for this model. So we've already answered, is it worth it? So I do think if you plan to wear these for a majority of your training sessions, they are worth it. They're a very different take on cross training shoes personally. Like I wasn't that big of a fan of the Reebok Nano 11, for example, the Metcon 7 is okay. It was different, but like, it's not really like my go-to for a ton of training. This model has pretty much slid in front of all of those other models when it comes to my training. All right, so now let's break down the construction of the Strike Movement Haze Trainer. So up here on the toe, we have an extended outsole layer that wraps up. That's from the cross platform to outsole. Decently thick in nature, overall really good sign for durability. We have some increased material throughout here on the toe as well to prevent breakdown from toe dragging movements. Throughout the upper, we have a 3D knit jacquard 
upper. So overall, it's very comfortable from the onset of wearing it. It's decently breathable and there's no external stitching, which is honestly pretty awesome, especially when it comes to having stitches fray from rope climbs, friction, etc., way too early. Throughout the midfoot here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven laces. The seventh is for lace locking. And we have a synthetic material throughout here to kind of add some increased durability to the overall lacing system. And the tongue itself is pretty thick. And check this out. We also have a lace pouch here. So if you want to knot up your shoes and then tuck your laces under for durability reasons or also just having them not come undone during your workout, you can easily do so in this model. So as you can see, laces are tucked and they do a decent job at actually staying in there, especially if you double knot your shoes and it's a bit thicker in nature. So it pushes against this material and really locks down the laces. So overall, I've talked on this before, but it's a pretty low profile design in the forefoot and midfoot. It hugs the foot really well. And I think that's what adds to the level of like maneuverability in this model. On the outsole, we have that cross platform two construction from Strike Movement. So as you can see, we have some different textures throughout. This is overall pretty awesome, in my opinion, for promoting traction in different planes. So if you're moving laterally, forward or backwards, this outsole does a pretty good job at really helping you drive through the ground to propel yourself in whichever direction you're going in. We have a lateral wrap over here on the external side for additional support for things like rope climbs and durability. And then back here on the heel, we have some subtle strike movement branding and then an increased material back here to really lock down that shoe. Overall, I haven't had any issues with heel slip in this model. And I really like that they have an external heel loop here because with the low profile design of the shoe, it can be a bit tough to get on if you don't unlace it all the way. So having this to pull it on is really great. And then we have a slightly thicker heel back here, overall decently stable. Like as you can see, it compresses a little bit, but it takes a lot of work. And when we're lifting and displacing weight through the foot, overall this material does a pretty good job at once again, remaining stable. And that's now speaking of the midsole, this is the medium density Kush 50 midsole that Strike Movement uses in this model. I talked on this already, but we do have a more anatomical last. So as you can see, we do have a little bit more of a curve to the toe box and midfoot in this model. That's to promote more of like a natural movement from a midfoot to forefoot strike. And lastly, we do have a removable insole. So if you do want to take your insole out and swap it in for something that you prefer, or if you have thinner orthotics, this model does allow you to swap out the insole. Overall, those are the biggest construction callouts for this model. If you have any questions on the construction in the shoe, hit me in the comments below and I will answer whatever you have. All right, guys, that wraps up my review of the Strike Movement Haze Trainer. Overall, I have been seriously impressed with this model and I give props to the community for recommending me to review this model. Thank you guys for that because I'm really happy I did. If you have any questions on this model, hit me in the comments below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer and feel most comfortable with. And as always guys, drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.